Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Rob, welcome back to the channel, and today we have some very interesting and in my personal opinion, exciting updates about the future of The Legend of Zelda. So I'm recording this on December 11th, which means that tomorrow, the day after I'm recording, is December 12th of 2023, which means that will be the seven month anniversary of the release of the newest Zelda game, which of course we know is The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, a game which I personally love, and it is easily my game of the year as far as new games released this year. I am naturally not counting Metroid Prime Remastered, because that is simply a re-release of my favorite game of all time, and it's a bit of a cheat. So as far as new games that released this year, I know Tears of the Kingdom has been divisive, and I've talked about it on my channel, and plenty of people have talked about it online this year, but in general, it's a beloved game, the reviews were outstanding, it had a chance to win Game of the Year, and it is my personal favorite game I played this year. One of the many questions that Tears of the Kingdom left us with is what the future of the franchise is, because, as has been discussed at length online and on my channel, Tears of the Kingdom is one of those few instances where a Zelda game releases that is a direct sequel to a prior game being Breath of the Wild. Now, personally, I love that about Tears of the Kingdom, and I love that about both of these games. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, to me, are two of the greatest games ever created. And Breath of the Wild, I think it's fair to say, had a larger impact and felt a little bit more game-changing and had the industry wrapped up in its excellence for much longer than Tears of the Kingdom did. Something else that I've also discussed on some prior videos on the channel here. But I still think that overall, even though the impact was greater and and it was fresher to play Breath of the Wild, I still think that Tears of the Kingdom is the better game. They had a lot of time to perfect the gameplay, the world of Hyrule. They improved it. They added new mechanics like Ultra Hand. They added the sky. They added the depths. I thought the story was very interesting. We've debated the plot holes that exist in the story that I acknowledge are there, but I still liked what it was in its own singular game. And so even as a sequel, I think it's a fantastic game. But being that it's one of the few direct sequels means we all started to ask ourselves what happens with the next new mainline console Zelda game. The game that, for all intents and purposes we all know, will end up releasing on like the Switch 2 or whatever the next generation console is going to be. It's clearly going to be another five or six years until we play the next main Zelda game, which is... Sad when you think about it, but I just try to rest in the world of enjoying the fact that Tears of the Kingdom is still a fresh game to help me kind of, you know, cope with the fact that it's going to be like half a decade before we play another Zelda game. And so what was their decision going to be? Is it going to be a third sequel, a third game in the same version of Hyrule, following the same storyline, using the same art style, the same general open world mechanics? and the climbing, and the weather, and the say, uh, the glider, and all these things that kind of make up the DNA of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Is the next game meant to be another game like that, or are they going to do what's actually normal for Zelda, and do a complete fresh reset of the world, the story, the graphics, the art direction, maybe the engine, the versions of Link and Zelda and Ganondorf that we're seeing in that game. Will they do the reset? Will they make a continuation? And, to my very much excitement, this is my personal spin here, IG Onuma, in a new interview with Game Informer, basically confirmed that they will not be making a third game that's a direct sequel to Tears of the Kingdom, and that, in theory, the next game will be another fresh take. Now, I'm going to link the full interview for you to read down below, because the whole thing is fascinating and they touch on some cool stuff, but here is the quick excerpt and answer IG Onuma gave about the future of Zelda. He says... As I've mentioned previously with Tears of the Kingdom, we were seeking to build on top of the world we created with Breath of the Wild and really exhaust the possibilities of what we could put into that world. I think it is, to use a bit of a term, an apotheosis or the final form of that version of The Legend of Zelda. In that regard, I don't think we'll be making a direct sequel to a world such as that that we've created. So quite a quote and a lot that we can take away from that because, like I mentioned even before reading it, it's basically a confirmation that the next game won't be a sequel and that they're going to do something new. And I like the fact that he touches on you know, when you look at Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom as two, like, companion games, they really have, in a sense, exhausted, as he says, everything you could do probably within that world, using that engine and that version of Hyrule and, and all that stuff. 
once you've added, you know, the climbing and the sailing and the physics engine from Breath of the Wild and the huge open world, and then you go on and you add Fuse and Ultra Hand and recall these insane physics bending abilities, on top of adding a whole sky map above and a huge depths map, map below, Hyrule in Tears of the Kingdom, they've done so much in this world between these two games, what more could we possibly want? I think not only is it the right thing to do from a development standpoint, but I think creatively, it's also the right thing to do because you need to freshen it up. And as fans, I'm speaking for myself only here, although I think a lot of you will agree, as a fan, I definitely want something creatively new. I love the two games we have. They're two games that are almost a 10 out of 10 to me. I'd give them like 9.8s or something each. They're just so fantastic. But because we've exhausted everything we can do in them, and over the course of six years, I've spent like 500 hours in this map of Hyrule between the two games, I myself am ready for something new. I want a new map, I want a new version of Hyrule, I want new geography, I would love to see a change to the visual style and the art direction like I was mentioning earlier, and I would like to see a reset version of our characters, Link, Zelda, and Ganondorf. It's a great reason to give you guys the reminder that's come up on the channel occasionally over this past year when talking about Tears of the Kingdom, which is that it might be easier for some folks to forget, maybe especially young folks who haven't lived through a whole lot of brand new Zelda game releases, but it is more common for Nintendo to release a completely new Zelda game that is detached in almost every single way from the prior game. And so you look at the art styles and the versions of the characters and the worlds that we're playing in across the Ocarina of Time. And I know there's Majora's Mask, so we'll use the Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. But then you go to games like Twilight Princess, you get the Wind Waker, you get Skyward Sword. I mean... The handheld games come into play a little bit as well, but some of those also are kind of playing in the Wind Waker style, only for like the DS hardware, so that gets a little fishier too. But in general, that's what happens. You've got distinct art styles between the two Nintendo 64 games, between the Wind Waker, between Twilight Princess, between Skyward Sword, bet between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. All these different games are using different maps, different versions of the characters and different concepts and worlds that we're playing in, and they reset the story. And yes, there is a timeline that shows all these loose connections with like centuries between all the events of the games, and each version of Link and Zelda are like reborn versions of past selves. But in general, when you look at them in their own bubble, each game is its own self-contained story and world, and that's what makes them really good and exciting. And so, as much as I think Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are two of the greatest games I've ever played and almost two perfect games, it is time for a new version of Zelda and these characters. And what better time to do it than knowing it's going to release on their next generation console? It becomes so unbelievably exciting to like the 10th degree when you realize not only are they going to reset the game and the story, but we're going to play it on new hardware that's vastly going to be more capable than the Nintendo Switch. So just the general quality of the game should be that much more improved beyond just changing it up. And you know, there are the semantics we can talk about, like are they going to bring back more traditional dungeons? Are they going to keep the open world thing? Are they going to go back to something a little bit more linear? Are they going to stay completely open with side quests? Are they going to find a balance in between? Will we get a companion character back? Are they going to change up the abilities? Things like that. An interesting side note in this interview is Aonuma does also confirm that they won't be including Ultra Hand in future games which I'm fine with, even though I loved it for puzzle solving in Tears of the Kingdom. I think it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in a game. One of the coolest mechanics, I should say. Um, if you're going to reset the world and the story and everything, there's no reason to include Ultra Hand because Ultra Hand as an ability has its own context from the story and it's inherent to the story and the world of the two Switch Zelda games. And so if you're going to do something different and jump around in the timeline way in the future or way in the past or whatever game they do, then in theory, like the powers and the abilities from these two games no longer have any merit or context. So that's one of the many reasons why you don't do it, let alone the fact that it would just feel repetitious from a gameplay standpoint. And so all I'll say to kind of wrap this up here is that I love this news. Yes, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, like I said several times, two of my favorite games. I love them. I have no issues with them. However, Zelda is built on changing it up with each new release, and it is time for something fresh. So I'm looking forward to a new art style. I would love something that veers a little bit more towards realistic, 
And it might seem ironic because my favorite Zelda game of all time is The Wind Waker, which is the most opposite of realistic they've ever done. But I'm ready for something with new power, you know, coming with the Switch 2. I'd like to see them do something that's building off of the famous Wii U tech demo. And I know it's cliche to ask for a Zelda game to look like that, but I am one of those people that would love to see a game that looks like that or even better. Take that art style and make it that much more cool, you know, with, with the Switch 2 or whatever. It's not the only style I ever want Zelda games to be in going forward. I'm just asking for one game, hopefully the next game, to look like that to see what Nintendo can actually do. But whatever they do, just changing the art style in either direction, I'm excited for. And yeah, I would like to see traditional dungeons and a companion come back. I think you can bring back linear storytelling with traditional dungeons, but also still put it in an open world with side quests. I'm hoping for like the perfect balance and compromise between the two. And so at this point, the future remains to be seen. It's an exciting time. I'm glad that we got some confirmations here right at the end of the year, almost seven months after we've all played and beat it, beaten Tears of the Kingdom. And most of us have loved it. Again, there are people who aren't fans of it, which is okay, that's normal. But the general reception has been extremely positive, And so, now that the game is officially behind us and we just have it to replay for the next few years, now we can start thinking ahead. And they're telling us they're going to change it up again, which is so exciting to me. As a longtime Zelda fan who goes back to the original release on the NES when I was a very small kid. So, these are the details. These are his quotes. These are my thoughts. Share your thoughts and your desires for the future of Zelda below. And with that, that's a wrap. I'll see you guys next time on another video.